All right, Saturday afternoon, it's your boy Big Rich, Queens of New York City, where we get busy. Salute to the GGC crew. I just threw some in the air myself. Gentlemen, you know the rules. Wipe your feet on the rug. Throw some smoke in the atmosphere. Time for some business. Now, we are going to continue our Stephen Crea series tomorrow with part six. So don't worry about that. But today, we're going to just do a different story real quick. Out the pages of the CostraNostraNews.com. By Ed Scarpo, salute to you, sir. Let's get right into business. Will Skinny Teddy call the shots for the Columbos or Joe Waverly? To have been a fly on the wall at the downtown Brooklyn halfway house, where the leading contenders for the slot of Columbo family boss, Theodore Skinny Teddy Persico Jr. and Joe Joe Waverly Cachese both cooled their heels for months. Unless the COVID-19 pandemic changed anything, Joe Waverly departed the Brooklyn Residential Reentry Facility last Friday, May 22. Skinny Teddy still has a few more days to go before his slated May 29th release. For now, Andrew Mush Russo is once again acting Colombo family boss. I'm going to say allegedly. Skinny Teddy Persico, 56, has been the presumed heir apparent since cousin Alphonse Alleyboy Persico went away for life after his 2008 conviction for the 1999 murder of William Wild Bill Cotullo. Skinny Teddy's father, who died in 2017, was a brother of Carmine Jr. Persico, the legendary and unpredictable boss of the Colombo crime family, who died last year at the age of 85 while serving a 139-year sentence. Teddy Persico has the lineage and the street experience to take the reins. When Teddy Persico was arrested and jailed in 2010, he was already underboss, and quite helpfully for the feds, he identified the crime family's acting hierarchy on a wiretap. Skinny Teddy also spent decades, actually most of his life, in prison. Fortunately for him, he was inside during the 1991-1993 Colombo War, which was already ongoing by 1988. Though Skinny Teddy used a prison furlough visit to New York City to issue a key war-ending hit order. He's more than capable, Bill Cotullo Jr. said, son of Wild Bill. Still, members of the Colombo family would seem to have much writing on whether Skinny Teddy has matured since his days as a hot-headed street thug. Though if history serves as any guide, it won't be long before Persico is locked up again. According to Gangland, Teddy has three years of post-prison supervised release ahead of him, which would give him time to prove his boss medal. Persico is finishing a 12-year sentence for ordering the 1993 murder of Joseph Scopo, who was killed in front of his queen's home months later. Teddy Persico whispered the order at his grandmother's 1993 Brooklyn wake. He had been let out of jail on a furlough expressively to attend the wake. Quote, you gotta kill Joey. Persico told three Colombo cohorts at Scarpacci Funeral Home in Diker Heights, so said one of the three, Anthony Big Anthony Russo, during testimony at the 2012 trial of another of the trio, B.F. Guerra. At the time, Persico was handcuffed, sitting in a room with both his grandmother's body and three state jail guards who transported him from an upstate prison. Persico wanted Scopa dead because Scopa had played a key role in the hierarchy of then Colombo acting boss Vittorio Little Vic Arena. Scopo was close to John Gotti, and it was believed that if the Arena faction had won the war, Arena would have killed to allow Scopo's rise. As reported in the previous story, John Gotti started the Colombo War. Michael Mickey Scars D. Leonardo told Costa Nostra News. He wanted to control the Colombo family. He had us. He had the Bonanno family, and he wanted the Colombos. It was Scopo he tried to work through the control of the commission. Persico loyalist likely offered extensive toasting to Teddy because of the Scopo hit, which ended the Colombo War and allowed the Persicos to prevail at the helm of the crime family. Teddy hasn't shown he has the right temperament to be the boss, some sources say. Quote, I knew Teddy when he was younger. He learned what it was to have the last name and use it to his advantage, one longtime Colombo mobster told Cosa Nostra News. I wouldn't call him boss material at that time. He was lacking the tactfulness. He may have matured into a leader or been groomed by a more seasoned friend while he was away. Larry Mazza, Greg Scarpa's former protege, you may have seen him in The Irishman in which he had a role who one of the gunmen who killed Albert Anastasia, discussing Teddy with Costa Nostra use several months back. Quote, Teddy's strength is in the Persico name. 
His weakness, when I knew him, he was raw, unpolished, and would be another gas pipe, John Gotti, etc. They need more chins and sparrows and castellanos. Referring to the wily former Genovese boss, Vincent the Chin Gigante, Bonanno Consiglieri, two-time acting boss, Anthony Spero, and CEO-minded Gambino boss, Paul Castellano. The first two died in prison and the last was slain in 1985. Anthony Gaspipe Caso, the former Lucchese underboss, confessed to killing 36 people and is still in prison and will be there forever. Counting Joe Waverly, 76 out of the running would be a mistake, though. Some sources caution. Joe, who already held positions in the Colombo hierarchy, including as acting boss or junior, initially had been a leading member of Vic Arena's rebel faction in the Third Colombo Civil War. Joe last Friday finished a 20-year bid for murder. Sources told us Teddy and Joe definitely discussed a new regime. There is no doubt that conversations have been going on. Problems very well could be in the cards based on how those discussions went. Maybe Joe says, Teddy, you're the boss, but you're not my boss, he said. Then again, the same source also said it could be that Waverly may fool them and move away just to disassociate. He's smart enough. The ruling dynamic, he believes, I'm sure most would openly stand behind Teddy or Waverly just to keep the peace. There will always be men who have lost someone or something, status or business, that will have something on the back of their mind. Waverly, for instance, if he isn't given a serious position after being shot, nearly killed, and finished 20 years, one would think. Joe Waverly has proven his toughness, surviving multiple shootouts in the street, including with the Green Reaper himself, Greg Scarpa Sr., with whom Joe Waverly had a years-long ongoing feud, the origin of which baffled even Scarpa's former protege, Larry Mazza. Joe Waverly never hesitated to whack anyone, including NYPD police officer Ralph Dahls. Dahls married Joe's ex-wife Kim in 1995 and was ambushed and gunned down in cold blood while arriving at his Brooklyn home one night in 1997. Federal prosecutors alleged Joe Waverly ordered that hit because Dawes married his ex-wife. Joe was acquitted at the trial for the murder. Joe reminds us of John Gotti and that he has the ability to not give a fuck when it suits him. Case in point. In 2003, Joe Waverly was arrested at his Deer Park, Long Island home at 6 a.m. for ordering four 1987 mob murders, including a former prosecutor's father, a judge. This was years before he was charged with the Dawes murder. The arresting agent sought to get under his skin by calling him a known cop killer. Quote, I don't give a fuck, Joe Waverly supposedly told them as they walked him out in cuffs as per gangland. Teddy Persico Jr. used to talk the way screenwriters think gangsters talk. This may have something to do with the fact that Skinny Teddy had spent most of his life in prison. You're not, quote, you're not me. Persico was taped telling mob turncoat Stephen Marcus in 2008, I just Quote, if it was up to me, I'd go get a gun and shoot them or stab them or beat them up when I see them, he said. I got nothing. They can't fuck with me because I got nothing to lose and they got everything to lose. You can't fuck with them because you got everything to lose and nothing to gain by getting physical. I can get physical all day long. I got, I got nothing to lose. I can get crazy. I don't give a fuck. What are you going to do to me? Put me in jail? What am I going to lose? My wife? My kids? My house that I own, my $2 million house that I own, or my car, I don't own nothing. I got no wife. I got no kids. I can act a fool. I'm telling you what I can do. I know you can't do that, and I know you don't want to do that. It's this kind of talk that should concern members of the Colombo family, sources tell Costa Nostra News. Teddy Jr. has had a problem with the law for most of his life. In 1983, when Persico was 17, he and Frank Smith, 16, were involved in a negligence lawsuit involving an incident that happened at a Persico family-owned farm in the Sargentes in upstate New York. Teenager Desiree Rios was seriously injured when an ATV collided with a tree. A jury verdict found Persico's negligence to be a proximate cause of the accident. It wasn't long after that, in 1987, that Persico was indicted for being a part of a large-scale cocaine trafficking organization. He sold cocaine to an undercover officer on four separate occasions, including one sale with 13 ounces. When Persico was released from prison in 2004 after serving about 16 years following his state conviction for narcotics trafficking, he immediately returned to his position in the Colombo family and began engaging in criminal conduct according to court-authorized wiretaps. 
On May 25, 2004, Persico was recorded discussing a weapon brought to him in advance of a potentially violent meeting with another Colombo family soldier. Persico stated, quote, They come there, the fucking thing is dirty. How do you keep a pistol with fucking dirty bullets in the first place? You got an automatic pistol. You clean the bullets, put them in the fucking clip, and the clip is ready whenever you're ready. In another conversation intercepted on November 23rd of 2004, Persico spoke about a collect Persico spoke about collecting a debt and instructed his co-defendant to bring an individual to him so he can give him a fucking beating. Persico further threatened that he would take it out on his kids, that's all, until he fucking does the right thing. First of all, great article by Ed Scarpo from Costa Nostra News and let us salute Skinny Teddy and Joe Waverly for being back home. They're on the streets. And we hope you stayed there. Salute. All right, Big Rich Mob Story Season 2. You know how we do. Like, comment, share. Gentlemen, you know the rules. Let me know what you're smoking on. Throw some smoke in the atmosphere. Salute.